I hope you're having a wonderful day. This is the second video on minerals. And in this video, we will bum, 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 be able to learn what a mineral is. In other words, the five things that every mineral must be to be a mineral. The eight properties we test to determine which mineral is which. These would be unique properties minerals can have within the property system. And basically explain how we do the hardness test, also known as Mohs hardness test. Okay, so kind of a little sketch in case you scanned your book, which is good to do. Page 33 does a really nice job. You're going to need to name all these five characteristics and describe what each of them means. So by the end, you ought to be able to fill that out. Moving right along, a mineral is naturally occurring. They come from the crust. It's not something that humans make. Glass, therefore, this type of glass is not a mineral. Okay, a mineral is inorganic. It's not made out of living things like coal. Okay, there is kind of a weird exception with shells, but you saw that in the first video. But it's not like that snail or dead worm, not a mineral. It must be solid, magma, water, ice, excuse me, magma, water, um, not solid, therefore not a mineral. Okay, it has to have a definite chemical composition. Okay, this is SiO2, it's quartz. Quartz is always made up of one silicon and two oxygens. That's the only formula, the only way you get quartz made, no matter if it's white quartz, rose quartz, smoky quartz, purple quartz, it's always SiO2, a definite chemical composition. And every mineral will have a unique particular crystal structure or crystalline structure, aka shape. Okay, there are some very common shapes that many minerals have, but if you're um, this particular mineral, it will always be this six-sided hexagonal shape. Okay, it can be big or little, but it's always the same shape. Okay. Part two, how do we identify minerals? We identify them by their properties. There are eight basic properties. Hopefully, you'll be able to fill one of these out and define them. Feel free to pause the video anytime. We'll start easy. You can identify them by color. Okay, what color does it look like? It's not the best one, but it is the easiest one. It's only one. You want to use way more than one. Streak. When you take your plate, your mineral, and you cruise it onto a streak plate, what color streak is left behind? What color powder? Luster, the way it reflects light. And we'll go into this in a lab lots of different ways. Okay. Hardness. The hardness is done on a scale. Um, Mo created the scale. One, nice misspelling. One wimpy, ten the hardest. So we'll even fix the spelling error right in front of your very eyes. Okay. And basically, if, if it's a one, which means it's way less than your fingernail, um, it's probably someplace under a two and a half. One is what's considered talc baby powder, really, really wimpy. Gypsum and mica are basically like a two. Your uh, fingernail is a two and a half. So if your fingernail can scratch something, its Mohs number is less than two and a half. If a penny scratches something, its Mohs number or hardness is less than three and a half, like calcite. Okay, if a steel nail can scratch it, we will do a lab using these tools. It's less than a four and a half, like fluorite. If your mineral can scratch glass or a knife blade scratches it, um, or it can scratch a nice knife blade, pardon me, it's probably aptite. Okay, moving right on. Okay, if a steel file is scratched by your mineral, it's less than a six and a half, like feldspar, very common thing in in glass and then we don't have a lot of common tests in the classroom for ones that are above like quartz corundum nine diamond I mean only diamond scratches diamond or cuts diamond corundum very very hard it's a nine so every mineral could be somewhere on this scale this hardness scale density take the mass divided by its volume the more dense it is the heavier it seems to be we'll do this in a lab and, of course, crystal structure pops up again. We'll do some of these so we can look and see crystal structures and see that all quartz is the same. Okay. How a mineral breaks when you hit it or when you crack it. If it has cleavage, it has really good smooth flat break in one direction. Or fracture, non-flat break. You can even get weird types of fracture called conchidal, which is irregular, curvy, kind of like a snail shell. Or splintery, if it just splints into a whole bunch types of fracture, cleavage or fracture along different planes. And of course, your mineral may have special properties. It may be magnetic, it may have, taste salty. Don't go around licking everything in the lab. That would be gross. 
Radioactive. We won't have any radioactive um, minerals in school, which is good. Um, it could have chemical reactivity. could have optical properties. So I'll show you some of these in class. So hopefully, you'll be able to fill this out now. What is a mineral? Can you label the five characteristics? And can you label the eight properties and define them, explain them? That was the goal by this lesson, especially being able to talk a little bit about Mohs hardness scale. We'll get some handouts. We'll do that in class. I hope you really enjoy it. Look back. Minerals are fun. They're all around us. So kick it, baby. <laughs>